Seller's Stamp Duty in Singapore. What is it, what do we need to know, and why does it matter for Australian expats? Hi there, Jared Brown here, Australian expat financial planner, helping Australians take control of their finances as expats here in Singapore. Now, as rents have gone absolutely bonkers over the last couple of years in Singapore, more and more of our clients and more and more expats in general have considered, should I go and buy property in Singapore? I'm paying all this rent, rent is dead money, or at least that's what I'm told. I'd much rather go and pay interest because that'll be a lot more exciting. Or at least does it make sense? Let's run the numbers, let's work out, should I buy a property in Singapore instead of paying rent? And one of the big fees or taxes or potential costs we need to be mindful of is seller's stamp duty. This was introduced in Singapore as a measure to stop people flipping property. So the Singapore government very sensibly designs these rules to incentivize the right types of behavior. And the right type of behavior they were trying to incentivize was long-term holding for property. The easiest way to do that is ensure that people incur quite hefty costs or fees if they do the wrong thing. And that is where seller's stamp duty comes in. So if you buy and sell a property, now we're not talking about HDB properties in Singapore, they have a different time frame, but a non-landed property here in Singapore, and you sell that property within three years, you could pay up to 12% seller's stamp duty. And that is on the sale price or the market value of that property. Here's how it works. If you buy a property and sell it within the first 12 months, then you'll pay 12%. If you sell that property between one and two years, that drops from 12 to 8%. And if you sell it between two and three years, it will reduce to 4%. So 12% if you sell a property for a million dollars, which wouldn't be a great deal as far as what many expats are living in here in Singapore. But if you sell that property for a million dollars, then that 12% in that first 12 months is 120,000. Now, of course, you can just say, well, I wouldn't sell it. That's an easy way to get around that. Well, what if we need to? What if there's an on-block sale and you have no choice? What if you need to return to Australia and we need the funds? Or what if we're going to return to Australia and that is now going to incur an unrealized capital gains tax? These are the things we need to be mindful of. It's not just the entry cost into property, of buyer stamp duty and additional buyer stamp duty, which is, was also increased quite significantly only recently, but we also need to be mindful of the costs of exiting that property right here in Singapore. So as always, run your numbers, don't make decisions blindly. Is it the right thing to buy or continue renting? Of course, there is no one size fits all, but run your own numbers, do your own homework, and of course, reach out with any questions. Thank you for tuning in and see you in the next one.